Praise the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for this wonderful time for joining with me to glorify God. Let us invite and expect God's presence to move in the midst of us and touch our lives. You know, before we can do anything, let us seek the face of the Lord in prayer and ask him to lead us this day to enjoy his presence and his blessings in our lives let us pray father in heaven we thank you for this time of prayer that you've given us to spend time in fellowship with, with you lord master it's our desire that we want to experience the fellowship with you this evening lord the time of thanksgiving and praises which we offer you let it be a pleasing sacrifice an incense and aroma to you lord and also father we want to hear from you teach us today the truth of your word because you said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free master we want to see the deliverance that comes from the truth in our lives of oh father be with us father and be thou glorified in the midst of us in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord dear friends let us sing a song unto the lord and then we will receive the word from his mouth amen
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let us meditate the word which the Spirit of the Lord is trying to speak to us. And I believe this is going to help us to become more strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Hallelujah. Today we are looking into a portion of the truth of righteousness. what i could say is we are learning about the power of righteousness the power of righteousness or the force of righteousness hallelujah so let us read from the first epistle of paul to the church at corinth chapter 1 verse 30 There he says but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption hallelujah you know let us let us understand the four things but of him ye are in Christ Jesus today we are in Christ because of him who of god is made because of jesus god made jesus for us wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption hallelujah let's read one more scripture portion that is isaiah 32:17 this scripture reads like this and the works work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever hallelujah you know there in corinthians we saw god made him jesus for our sakes the righteousness of god so that we can put his righteousness on us to stand before him and here this isaiah 32 17 is talking about the work of righteousness the fruit or the power or the outcome of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever amazing Let's look into another portion that is Isaiah 54 verses 14 to 17. Here it says in righteousness shall thou be established means by the righteousness we will be established. Thou shall be far from oppression for thou shall not fear and f- and from terror for it shall not come near you fear terror oppression will not come us come to us or in front of us when we are established in the righteousness you know today if we can look into the scenario we are afraid we are oppressed and the terror is all around us but one thing is true if we are in established in the righteousness of christ if we are established on the righteousness of god this will not come near us that's what scripture promises us and verse 15 says 
Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. When we are established in righteousness, anything that comes against us will fall. You and I will not fall, but those things will fall. Whether it may be sickness, whether it may be problem, whether it may be calamity, or whether it may be wars, or whatever it may come, whether it's pandemic or whatsoever it may be. Fear, terror, anything. That cannot stand when we are standing in righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 16 says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. Verse 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. If you, are, you and I are established in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, no weapon that is formed against us by the devil can prosper. Any kind of weapon, any kind of evil, any kind of sickness, any kind of problem that cannot prosper or that cannot succeed. And everything that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. You will condemn those things but you will, you will not be condemned by those things. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the heritage of those people who believe in Christ and those who are righteous in Christ. And that, that in that portion very clearly says, this or their righteousness is of mine, is of mine. God says, your righteousness is my righteousness. When we are covered by his righteousness, Believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, nothing in this world can disturb or destroy or harm us. The righteousness of God has so much of power, such a force that it resists all the evil, all the weapon that is framed by the devil against you and will be protected by God's righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. That means, what, what does this whole three scriptures are talking to us? They are saying, Righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of the Father without a sense of guilt. We can stand before God without the sense of guilt or any sense of sinful nature. Hallelujah. Or we will not be able to, we will not be standing in the sense of condemnation. We will not be standing in the presence of God as inferior people. Hallelujah. We will stand before him as if we are sinless. It is not just as if those who have believed in Jesus Christ, those who are repented and confessed their sins to Jesus and received the forgiveness through the washing, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, our sins are blotted out forever. Our sins are forgiven and we are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Means sinless, free from sin. Hallelujah. So the righteousness of God sets us free from the power of sin and we will stand before God with the right standing authority as the people who are righteous and holy through the righteousness and holiness of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe you are able to catch up what I am trying to tell you. We can't stand before God by our righteousness nor by our holiness. But when we put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ, when we put on the holiness of Jesus Christ, our sins are completely cleansed and we become righteous and holy by His righteousness and holiness and we will be able to stand before the holy God, the righteous God and see and understand and experience the power of His righteousness. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe you are saved. 
hallelujah if you are a saved child of god you have this privilege of standing in the righteousness of jesus christ before the almighty god hallelujah and believe this righteousness is not yours it is god's amen praise god let us read one more scripture portion that is from romans chapter 5 verse 17 this scripture reads like this for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ if we are believed in jesus christ this scripture promises us that we receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in our lives by one man jesus christ hallelujah righteousness will reign over our lives that means we will have the ability of right standing with god hallelujah praise the lord then we'll read one more scripture here that is romans chapter 3 verses 21 onwards few scriptures i'll read it for you this is most more powerful truth that we can really understand but now the righteousness of god without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all you know this is the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ by believing in jesus christ we enjoy this righteousness of god hallelujah unto all it is not for one anyone who is come ready to come to christ he will have the righteousness of god hallelujah and upon all them that believe for there is no difference god is not a god of partiality anyone who wants to believe in christ and come that person can receive this righteousness as free gift to have a fellowship with the living god hallelujah and verse 23 says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god being justified freely by his grace through the repent redemption that is in christ jesus whom god hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god you know through the death and shedding of the blood of jesus christ we will be imputed by the righteousness of god that's what it's talking all about amen praise the lord we we will be declared his righteousness and again con continuation of this portion the scripture says to declare i say at this time this time his righteousness at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in jesus christ the one who believes in jesus christ god justifies the man saying this person is righteous how beautiful it is it is a free gift hallelujah amen then he says where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith it is not by works it's by, not by law it is just by believing in jesus you and i will be clothed with the righteousness of god and verse 28 says therefore we conclude he's saying therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law means we will be justified or we will be made righteous not by what we do but by believing in christ jesus alone hallelujah praise the lord so 
another scripture we can we can read this portion later in romans 10 verses 1 to 10 is also talking about this how we become righteous by believing in the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ so this righteousness is directly connected with the salvation the person who is saved is justified by god and stands before him as righteous person by the righteousness of god and of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord so that means there is a need for us to understand how we approach god here amen are we approaching god with the sin consciousness are we approaching god through the right conscious of righteousness hallelujah so let me tell you a few things here when we are sin consciousness we cannot act boldly hallelujah praise the lord it always hesitates you know when you and i have the consciousness of sin we can't come to god boldly or we hesitate to come to the presence of god because our own consciousness is hindering us then when we are in sin consciousness it requires some physical evidence that god is moving you know we will not be able to move unless we have some evidence sensual evidence or physical evidence that god is doing something until then we will not move on the other hand the consciousness of righteousness it knows when we are when we are having the consciousness of righteousness we know god is moving because he asked him to do something because he has commanded something because we are doing according to what he has said we will surely know that god is moving i'll put one example small example you know when you are having a consciousness of righteousness you know for sure whether you are feeling or not whether seeing it or not god is with you god is helping you but on the other hand if we are in sin consciousness what happens is we always doubt about the presence of god with us you know every time we will feel oh whether god is with me or not god is hearing me or not god has left me because the sin consciousness requires some kind of physical or sensual proofs to believe god is doing something in our lives hallelujah it is such a powerful thing my brothers and sisters we need to have or we need to build up this consciousness of righteousness which we have received from christ hallelujah so let me put some things in front of you you know jesus displays or shows the effect of the force of righteousness amen just in front of the tomb of lazarus you know if you can read the account recorded in the book of john gospel of john chapter 11 verses 30 to 44 where he raises lazarus from the dead hallelujah you know there jesus displays the force of his righteousness you know what he says he never prays there he says he prays to the father and he says lord i i am not praying for myself 
I am praying for these people around me, those who are standing here, to see that you always hear my prayer. And you know, he raises Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus comes back to life after four days of his death. So the force of righteousness is so much, even it can bring the dead man to back again to life. Hallelujah. Another thing. The righteousness cannot be obtained by works. You cannot become righteous by doing good things or so many other things. You know, let me read a scripture portion for that to confirm. That. Uh, hallelujah. In uh, Romans. Chapter 9 verses 30 to 32. It says, What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness? Even the righteousness of righteousness is which is of faith. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by works for the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. You know verse 32 it says, Because the house of Israel sought the righteousness by works, it did not sought by faith, they did not receive the righteousness. Hallelujah means all my good works are filled the rags that's what scripture says in isaiah all the righteousness of man is like a filled rag in, in the presence of the lord so our good works works cannot qualify us to be righteous it is only faith in the lord jesus christ qualifies us to be righteous and made by god we are justified we are not we are justified by God as righteous. Hallelujah. One more thing is, praise the Lord. This righteousness can come only by submission to Him. Let me read one more scripture for portion for that. In Romans chapter 10 verses 1 to 4 we read, Here he, Paul writes, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Why they need to be saved? Only by salvation they can be justified by God as righteous. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. They have zeal but it is their own zeal not you know by the knowledge of the Almighty. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they are ignorant about God's righteousness and they are trying to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They did not submit themselves unto the righteousness of God. They were trying to be righteous thereby own. Hallelujah. When we try to be righteous by our own, that cannot be accepted by God. Rather, we need to submit to His righteousness, which produces the fruits of righteousness, which is to glorify God Almighty. And finally, let us read one more scripture which says, This righteousness which is by faith that speaks. This righteousness is not just a you know, virtue, it is, you know, it speaks, it does. Whatever it speaks about, it works like that. You know, we'll read from the same uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 6. Here it says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Say not in your 
heart is it possible instead it says you speak amen so but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh to this wise like this it speaks like this that means it will happen amen so what we are understanding from this scripture if we are standing in right relationship with god when we speak by faith in the righteousness of jesus christ whatsoever we speak by faith according to the word of god or let me put it in this way when we speak the word of god having right relationship with god right standing with god whatever the word we confess the scriptures that we confess those scriptures will come to pass in our lives because we have a right standing with god amen the person who believes in jesus has been justified his sins are taken care of and the person is made righteous to stand before god to have right standing with god amen and when we have that grace to stand with him in righteousness this righteousness reveals or manifests the power of what we speak the word to happen in the natural in reality that's the power the righteousness of god has so people of god let us not try to become righteous by our own good works or our good deeds or by our good words or whatever we feel is right we cannot we become righteous only by the blood of jesus which is shed to purchase our redemption and through that redemption and salvation we can be called righteous by god and we can experience and enjoy the force and the fruit of the righteousness in our lives i pray to the lord that god will add all these blessings in your life and every scripture that you confess every scripture that you speak might be fulfilled in your life and to see the salvation of the lord in every part of life amen let us pray father in heaven we thank you for this wonderful time that you have given us lord father we acknowledge and we admit that we are not righteous by our good works nor by the law or keeping some sets of traditions law we are made righteous we believe by the sacrifice of jesus christ the atoning sacrifice the blood shed for our forgiveness and faith in that atonement has justified us lord today father acknowledging the righteousness of jesus christ we say lord no weapon that is formed against shall prosper and every mouth that is lifted will be condemned by us lord because we are put on by the righteousness of god through christ lord we thank and we praise you lord we want to see the fruits and the power of the righteousness of god which you have imparted us lord which you have imputed on our lives of father god thank you father in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah praise the lord god bless you my brothers and sisters i believe god has blessed you i think this truth is little bit hard to understand if you can hear two three times surely you will be able to understand this and the spirit of god will make you understand just pray and listen to it again and if you feel if someone else need this you can forward the link of facebook or youtube to your friends 
who are in need. Let them be blessed too. Amen.